Welcome, everybody, back here to our Roadburn special at Vale of Sound. And uh, as you have already seen, sometimes we do not only talk to people behind the stage, but also some people on stage. And because of that, we're very, very happy to have one of the artists or a few of the artists here that will perform one of the commissioned pieces. So uh, very happy to have Renaud, Lea and Jonah here with us, who are part of the Trance Commission. I don't even know how to pronounce that. So, first of all, thanks for being on the show. Second of all, how do I pronounce that name? <laughs> it's uh, it's pronounced Trance, Trance. As, uh, as in punishing severely, more or less, something like that. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be very soft chamber music. Well, there will be some some soft parts somehow, <laughs> but it's you know always going to be kind of creepy some way mm. so uh, first of all maybe um each and every one of you can say a little bit about which band they're usually in or in which way they are connected to the project and of course being a gentleman we start with leah <laughs> uh well actually that's funny because i mm, i've never really been in a band before actually mm -hmm. uh yeah so uh, it's a bit strange because I know uh, all the Hummus team because I work as a light technician. So usually I work with bands, but not on stage, actually. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, maybe Jonah is going to answer this better than me because I don't know why I'm here, actually, <laughs> like in the band. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome because I play music. I I love this so much, but... Uh, I have no experience, uh, really, no big experience, and so that's that's kind of funny because um, for me it's the first time actually I go to Roadburn, for example. So, yeah, um, it's a it's a really a huge experience for me, and it's and it's awesome. Uh, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> we are good friends, I guess, and uh, I've been with these people for a while now, but uh, working for something else and uh doing music with them is really cool but actually i don't have really bands <laughs> on the side well actually i have now but since like two months ago so <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so uh, reno tell us a little bit about you please. yeah uh, so um I've, I've known uh jonah for a few ages we played uh at the time i had a band called kruger and we played a few tours together with call guns i'm also working for the label and i just heard about that uh that black metal project for Rodburn, and uh i thought that was the, the the right the right time to 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 step in because i'm turning 50 this year so some teenage music would do me some good <laughs> so um i just asked jonah do you have any 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 vocal vocalist in the band and he said i don't have a i don't have a clue yet so please please step in and it happened that way so jonah you're not only the head of hummus music or hummus records what are you gonna do in the band on in trounce um well mostly i wrote the music most of it at least uh like what what we were using as a basis for the the creation i'm um and i'm playing guitar and doing backing vocals as well um and basically doing the whole i guess kind of like um you know artistic direction of things mm -hmm. um i mean yeah um and then I also mm -hmm. gathered the, the team um, and, you know, except for Renault, who kind of forced himself into the project. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, dealing with every other aspect that is connected to, to this commission piece be, being, you know, the, the communication with Roadburn, uh, the various uh, tech, the tech crew, everything, all the concepts around this, this band now is has became become kind of a very intense job the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, though um, it's the music is kind of like technical and complex um, and teenage kind of as well, you know, that's that's music I started writing like a couple of years ago while I was writing the new Colgan's record. And 
because Colgans is so intense with everything that I needed something to, you know, express myself easily. <laughs> and that became those songs that we're using in Trounce. Um, but um, I also uh, really wanted to, when, when I heard that I was getting this commission piece, I also wanted to give it like another dimension, like a, like that there should be like a creative part with more people and that, um, you know, it would have been very easy to just um, have people that know how to play their instruments and that have um, experience or anything because we have a big network for that. But I thought it was less funny and we like to work as a family. So when Renault was like, oh, could I try vocals? I was like, well, yeah, I sent him demos and he, mm -hmm. you know, he did it and it worked out. And um, and yes, for Lea, for example, um, we've been working together for a couple of years now. And as she said, she you know she's been more uh, on the tech side of things, so she's doing lights. Or she's also you know very humble. She's not saying that she's an amazing uh, illustrator. So she's been designing merch for Colgans and for various artists as well. She's a tattooer, and. Um, yeah, once she recorded two songs uh, with a friend and this friend sent us those two songs and we realized that she could sing like crazy, but she can also play instruments. So I was like, fuck it, you know, why not? <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I think that's, that's, gonna, that's because of characters like Lea in the band and also Anna who's playing synth and has no musical, proper musical background that's... Um, that you know that this commission piece is going to be so unique because it's yeah it's so great to work with people that i don't want to say don't have a clue but like for example leah she's a great musician and a great singer but she doesn't really have the codes of extreme music yet she's playing with a super extreme band now and i think that's what's going to make the difference in the end it's that always the answer sorry it's always the best thing if your first gig is in front of a few thousand people at rope burn I'm in no better yeah, way. No right. pressure. No pressure, right? No no pressure at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so without dropping every name and every instrument, but how many people are we going to see on stage with Trounce? Uh, six. six. Six people. Okay. Yeah. Can we expect any unusual instruments or is it the the usual synth drums bass guitar uh no bass uh there is going to be synth um playing basically basses i guess <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh, anna who's doing um noises she's going to have a lot of there's not going to be a weird homemade instrument that you're going to be able to see on stage, but she's going to be doing weird things with weird objects to make weird noises mm -hmm. and whispers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> you also have been talking about the process of writing. So my question, first of all, for Leah and for Reno is, um, how did it feel when you got those um, ideas pitched from Jonah and you had to react to it. Were you already convinced, okay, this is the perfect part, or did you maybe sometimes say, let's twist it and tweak it a little bit? Well, the first thing was that's uh, from my, my part, at, at least, I had to just understand it because it's really fast stuff, really heavy stuff, and um, well, I think Leia is uh, pretty much in the same case. We, we're not like black metal as before. So we just had first to uh, digest the thing and, and see how it works, understand the, the tracks, and then, uh, and, then, and then we try to rush in and uh, it was okay. But it's been, it's been quite a, quite a, a few times to, um, to get used to it. Now I love blast bit, but it's the first time ever in my life I'm singing on blast bits. So, so there's a moment <laughs> for everything. <laughs> And Jay and Leah, you as I know you are going to be the youngest on stage. Um, is there any even further element to that? To first, you have to understand it, then you have to get used to it. Something else too that was difficult for you. Um, well, actually, uh, what what is strange is, is the process of it all. I think because. 
like what I can see, usually you make a band, uh, you know someone, you do music together, you're like, nice, let's bring a drummer to that. And you build it like slowly, sometimes, mm -hmm. most of the times, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But here is like just one person calling me and Jonah was like, what I what I imagined at that moment, it was like, you know, Ocean Eleven, <laughs> you know, he's like calling people to like, just come and do this with me. And you're like, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> but what, okay. And that's how I felt like someone just bringing me to into something already here, already already written and all. So um, it's, it's also weird because we had to do it like really quick because we all have a lot of things <laughs> to do. And uh, we started rehearsing like, pretty late, I think. But uh, so before that, we were like all separate uh, on our own, just working mm -hmm. on stuff, listening to it and trying to learn it. And um, so, yeah, all the process was kind of an experience <laughs> for, for now, I think. And so I don't know, but uh, like Renu said, I think the thing is uh, we we had the time just to to understand it, to learn it, and to, yeah, to appropriate. I don't know how to say that. To make mm. it your own? Yeah, that. And so slowly, um, the more we practice, the more we play, the more uh, I'm at ease with all of this. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be cool. But the, the beginning was like, oh, okay. And, you know, I don't know Renault that much. We are like really some people just meeting for doing something really awesome but actually we don't really know each other for for some reasons <laughs> and so yeah it's it's kind of cool like going to a huge party and you're like okay <laughs> so <laughs> jonah cool. jonah is basically george clooney and wrote burners for heist yeah with that's Blair Roberts, then. That's it. <laughs> that's exactly it. But of course, we have to say that <laughs> Renault is Brad Pitt, who is always much better looking than George Clooney. Yeah, much yeah, better. of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have now dropped several times that genre, black metal. Um, so, Jonah, how or no, what should we expect? Are we going to get true Scandinavian black metal or anything softer from the Northwest Pacific side of the US, what's it going to be like? Well, to, to be, to be perfectly honest, it's like, I, we use the, we use the, the term black metal, but it's not really black metal. It's, it's truly, it's just, it's very, it's pretty much extreme metal. Mm -hmm. It's really metal. That's for sure. It's definitely extreme, but it has, you know, I started this as because I had, um, it's just that I put blast beats and like easy. I was listening to Dark Funeral too much three years ago. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah. I was listening to Dark Funeral. And so, you know, it's black metal, but it's definitely not true black metal. Yeah, I was yeah. just, I guess I was, I've, I've always been fascinated by, um, by this like super, um, those super big product black metal productions from the mm -hmm. early two thousands, you know, yeah. those ones, those black metal records that sounds like in flames, you know, kind of. Yeah. yeah. In terms of production, you know, like, uh, so we cannot say it's true black metal at all. It's just like I'm using certain codes from this, and because the um, drummer I've been spending my life with, uh, Luke, who's the drummer in Colgans and used to play with the Ocean as well and all that. Uh, and close at Disco Queen, basically all my bands. He's the only drummer I ever play with, basically. So um, he's basically your he's business. He's not wife. a drummer that. Yeah. But he's all -star. basically my my <laughs> definitely my love partner in every regard. <laughs> I guess I've definitely slept into the same bed more times than anyone else with with Luke. And so Luke is not a drummer that use that can blast beats or play double bass drums. So I've always been a bit frustrated that I couldn't write music. So when I wrote this, uh, those songs, the the start of these songs, I just I just programmed drums with a lot of double bass drums and you know and blast beats, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
so that's how we I came up with like oh I wrote a black metal record but you know I I'm I listen to too many things and I'm too weird in my guitar playing to only do one thing so it's it's not really black metal but it has elements of black metal definitely uh, I guess some of thrash metal also some metalcore here and there like honestly it's it's just very all of the extreme genres in gathered into one pot and I also um I also listen to a lot of like northern music, but you know more stuff like sounding uh, like like uh, how do you call this dark folk, whatever you know. Mm-hmm. I'm like thinking Mirko? of Vardruna, Vardruna. Yeah, dark folk. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mirko as well. Yeah, or Vardruna or Heilung, this kind of stuff. So there's going to be elements like that as well. Um, so that's going to be a very big mix of things, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Does the thing have like an overarching topic, an overarching theme? You don't have to explain it all, but can you give us a little snippet? That's for Renault to answer that part. Oh, sorry, I was thinking of something else. Sorry. <laughs> Those are the 50-year-olds. You know, they don't pay attention. Yeah, um, that's right. He, no, he just he just put a background with his picture. Yeah. He's, not doing, he's not listening to the interview. <laughs> Oh, but, I, 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 yeah. Sorry. No, the, the question was um, if there is some kind of overarching topic to the whole piece. Oh. Well, since uh, Thursday, he just ruined my dreams because I was hoping to play in a black metal band finally, but it's not black metal, as I heard. Um, when I join in, hearing all those blast beats and all that extreme metal side of things the topics were pretty obvious for me so it's all related with jesus god and all that all that all that crap in a funny way i hope and uh yeah pretty much when i recorded the the when, when we've been working with the song guy uh kevin said are you talking about god in every song i said yeah that's i didn't have any much much other id so that's that's it <laughs> okay um Will you have something, as you've mentioned, these these dark folk bands, and a lot of them also put a lot of thought onto their stage production, like like backgrounds or visuals or anything like that. Um, are are we gonna see something like this? Uh, kind of, yes. I mean, we're obviously playing that big stage. You know, it's a it's quite a, it's quite a spotlight on the on the label on us as individuals as artists mm-hmm. as for our bands and for the i would say even for the underground um uh, scene in switzerland it's quite a spotlight that's what uh, becky and walter wanted to do by you know um giving us this commission piece and so we're definitely gonna come with the big guns <laughs> for you know for our for for what we're concerned obviously we're not going to have like confettis and like fire but um we're definitely going to do a couple of residencies where we're going to work out on a you know good light show with a good light technician mm-hmm. um we're also going to use uh, because at roadburn they have screens everywhere <laughs> you cannot use backdrops uh it's easier for changeovers and so we're going to use the screen as well and uh, the visual side is going to be quite important because I think it's already very strong. The image we shared um, with um, for the, the commission piece in Roadburn is, is not obviously a random picture. Mm-hmm. It's a great photographer from um, our area. My cat is just mewing so much. Just go away for a second. Um, the photographer has some very strong um, pictures and I had this in mind for years to work with him and I thought this project was going to be great. And then I also um, I also worked with um, two illustrators, uh, an American one and uh, fuck, an English one. One of them is quite big. Uh, it's called Adrian Baxter. He's mm-hmm. doing like uh, illustrations for like the biggest bands on the planet, I guess. So there's going to be visuals. By visuals, I mean, we're going to have drawings from this guy and this other guy Mm -hmm. from the US together with the pictures from this photographer. And that's a pool of designs that we're going to use for merch, obviously, that we're going to use as as well for visuals. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, it's mostly, you know, 
it's mostly like a occult or like satanic symbology, I mm-hmm. guess, or just symbology in general, like chemical, uh, alchemic, fuck, you know what I mean? Symbology. Alchemy and, uh, symbology. <laughs> Alchemy symbology. God damn it. That's too much k and everywhere. Um, well, it's too much k but... and not enough. <laughs> exactly. And it's it's but it's the same concept as the lyrics. It's uh, like Renaud was saying that you know it's like he he hopes that his lyrics are being taken in a funny way, and it's hard to in such a short time for such a, a pop up project. For me, it was hard to focus on like having a deep thinking about everything. Mm. So the aesthetic is like some things that I think looks nice and matches the music. Um, but there's no like, uh, you know, crazy concepts going from the lyrics to the imagery. We're like building this thing that is more about aesthetic and uh, skills, so to speak, with the music and the image. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Kind of. Cool. Mm-hmm. We only have like two more questions before we come to our infamous quickfire round. Um, I guess, Jonah, you're probably the one to answer the following question best. Uh, how did you react when? It all was settled. You got the okay from Roadburn. All the finances were cleared. And you got the get-go to do this kind of commission thing. What was that feeling like for you? I was wondering um, how much sleep I was going to get for the next couple of months. I was kind of worried, uh, to be fairly honest. But I couldn't say no. And there was no other um, time where I could have done this, actually. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's... The confirmation of this happened in November, I think. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. And by then, my agenda was completely full until the end of the year. And luckily, it wasn't. I mean, it was by the early early to 2023, but I didn't have a Colgan's record to release. That's for next year. So I was like, well, if there's one time I'm going to be able to do this, and which is going to be great and useful as well, as the spotlight is going to be great for the label and everything that's coming, uh, after that, then I have to do it now. So I just told Becky and Walter, like, yes, I can do it. Absolutely. But no problem. I told, I told them afterwards that it, I wasn't that happy at first because I was like, fuck, what am I getting into? And I was really, <laughs> really stressed because as Leah said, we started pretty late because we were so busy. We couldn't rehearse. So we started rehearsing basically mid-January just Luke and I, so the drummer and I first, and now we've been rehearsing all together almost pretty much every day for a few weeks. So it goes fast, but yeah, my reaction was like, fuck, how am I going to do this? And then afterwards I was like, fuck, did, am I really going to do this? Like, did they really offer me this? You know, I've seen, mm-hmm. I've seen bands and artists that inspired me for years having these commission pieces. It's four mm-hmm. commission pieces per year. It's unbelievable that you know that they 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 gave it to to me in some ways to me i'm saying to me it's a bit um self-centered is they asked me to lead this piece but they Mm -hmm. specifically asked me to uh get people from bands on the label and to do some kind of a super group because they they just like the label and the vibe of the label. So mm-hmm. it's double rewarding because, you know, me as an individual artist, is this is crazy. And as a record label, is also crazy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm pumped. I still, I'm not realizing this is happening, to be fairly honest. And now something for Leah and for Renault. I mean, apart from all the stress and all the pressure and all the unfulfilled dreams of teenage music, mm-hmm. um, do you too also take some kind of pride in being asked to participate or being allowed in order to participate? Of course, I guess we both are, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I think we sh- we share uh, Jonathan uh, amaze amazement being asked. Like, uh, uh, are they sure they want to ask Jonathan who wants to do that for for that festival? <laughs> <laughs> is it a mistake somewhere or something? And uh, yeah, I, I think we, we, I guess we are accompanying Jonah in, in this, in this stressful adventure. But yeah, of course, we are very honored, very, very excited. And 
of course, we would have loved to to play a couple of bars before before opening the stage of one thousand something. But I guess that's the that's the deal. So so there's some some work uh, some some more work along the way. But uh, yeah, of course, we're very we're very, we're really proud now. We'll talk we'll talk again uh, on the twenty second. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're even prouder. Um, last question. Um, is this going to be a one-off performance at the moment or for the moment? You know, um, the commission pieces is at Roadburn are exclusive to Roadburn at first. Yeah. So this is going to be an exclusive performance at first at mm. Roadburn on April 21st. Then, And uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, and then it's usually those commission pieces are also recorded, right? So another bit of pressure. Um, but I am very, very sure all three of you will do brilliantly. And um, let's come to our always beloved category, the infamous quickfire round. You get, uh, in this case, uh, six questions because you're so many people. Uh, it's always something like roses versus tulips. What do you like more, Barcelona or Madrid? Where would you like to go now? Um, you always have to choose one of the alternatives and give a short explanation. Um, let's. How does it work? Okay. Do you do you ask one question and then we answer yes. each after another? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Um. Let's start off with something simple. Next place to spend a weekend in, France or Italy? Italy. Italy, definitely. Italy as well. <laughs> Which genre? Yeah, first. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. supposed to explain, right? right? Well, <laughs> yeah, let's just quick do... explain. <laughs> yeah, Leah, explain. Why, why Italy? Uh, basically, it's like France, but people are nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was bad. You, none of your I bands mean, will no. ever play it's a French like stage again. No, I'm joking. I love France so much, but actually, the real reason I was joking, the real reason is France, I could go there a lot, thanks mm -hmm. to Jonah and people I go on tour with. Yeah. So I love France and there's definitely places I want to go on vacation, mm -hmm. but I've never been a lot to Italy and Italy is like always, you know, it's like vacation. Yeah, go to Italy, there's like food everywhere, the like beaches and yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, that's why I would go to Italy. <laughs> but I love friends. <laughs> that was <a> joke. <laughs> yeah. when, La, La when... Chaussons, La Chaussons, the, the the town where uh, most of us are coming from, except me, it's just like one uh, like twenty kilometers away from France. So France is yeah. not an exotic. Italy is yeah. more like California. See, Ooh, California. <laughs> um, on your <laughs> way to Italy, which genre would not leave your? Uh, your car stereo post rock or post metal yeah post rock definitely post rock for me <laughs> would have been post metal maybe a few years ago i guess it's yeah i know i i always um when you got those people playing in heavy metal bands or extreme metal bands like the week festival with they play with other thousands of heavy metal bands or extreme metal bands and when they're in the car they're just playing again heavy metal or extreme metal i just don't get the point i would rather listen to frank sinatra in the van because i think we're gonna get plenty of uh plenty of loud stuff on the festival That's true. That's true. jonah mm -hmm. which one would, did you choose i have to choose right <laughs> uh god um yeah well i guess post metal rather than post rock then okay. but that's not a choice that i'm making out of you know super pleasure <laughs> don't worry the questions will get harder <laughs> uh as i know that some of you also have a certain love for noisier stuff unsane versus the jesus lizard That would be insane for me. 
because I love the guys. Well, would have been unseen until the recent re re rejoin. Uh, they just joined a few months ago. Well, it's not a real band, so been a bit disappointed. But yeah, would be unsaid because I've been listening to them like forever. And uh, but it's just that it's cool as well. But it's yeah, unseen for me. I'll go with the unseen because I am familiar with some of their records, but I'm definitely not familiar with any record from the Jesus Lizard. So not afraid to say so. Sorry. A typical question. <laughs> what did you say, Renaud? It's difficult questions. I know. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna become harder. Leah, you're, oh. you're last to choose. Um, I would choose Insane too, because uh, I don't listen actually a lot of that kind of music, but I do a bit, and Insane, I really enjoy it. Uh, Jesus Lizard, I didn't, I've never really listened to that, so yeah, Insane, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> the last. <laughs> The last yeah. easy question. Um, what would you rather eat in Italy, risotto or pasta? Oh, that's so easy. Yeah, that's pasta, cool. of course. Pasta for me, yeah. Because that's the best meal in the world, isn't it? Oh, how you jo guys can take decisions jo like that jo quick? Seriously. Jonah and jo I Jonah, Jonah have problems. For Jonah because he, he I think, eat so much, anything. I don't know. I think... Honestly, in the recent years, I would say I would go for risotto because it's just like you can do even more with risotto because you can put everything with risotto, which you can with pasta as well, but there's just more cheese into risotto <laughs> all the time. That's a tough one. Yeah, but I mean, like if a dish ends with cream, butter and cheese, then it usually wins, right? And now yeah. the two more it's difficult definitely. ones. <clears throat> Both related mm -hmm. to the Swiss metal scene. Um, for me, one of the biggest bands ever to come out of Switzerland is um, Celtic Frost. So I have to ask, which one would you rather listen to on a dark night? Into the Pandemonium or Monotheist? Um, Monotheist for me? Well, Monotheist, yeah. Because that, that opening riff is just so heavy. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah, no. yeah Monotheist. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still speaking. Okay. Yeah, let's... right. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I don't think I can answer that. Okay. <laughs> I just don't know that, that much. <clears throat> you don't know the band? Right. Yeah, the band. Yeah. We already have a couple of bands to avoid post rock and post metal in the van Celtic Frost and Jizz Lizard. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the last one Knut versus Rockal. Oh, come on. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh... Okay, I can also say. Uh, Terraformer versus <laughs> Helio Galavus, Gabalus. Uh, Terraformer. Mm. I would say Knut as well. I would I always guess too. choose. <laughs> I, would, I would always choose Helio Gabalus over nearly everything. Sorry. Okay. That's also one of the reasons no, why we did that. Right. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why we did that little huge special on the record a few weeks ago so guys and lady uh thanks for taking your time i know you have to be off for practice so practice when this one comes out it's only going to be a few days till friday 21st we're all looking forward mm -hmm. you will see a lot of faces in the crowd one will be me yeah. and, all right um, enjoy the, the trip to Roadburn, mm -hmm. listening to a lot of post rock <laughs> and, Jesus, <laughs> and Jesus Lizard and Monotheist. And Leah will probably never play in a band again because she says, Oh, those stupid white guys playing stupid white guys' music. <laughs> <laughs> so, see you in a few days. Enjoy the rest of our rehearsals today. And thanks a lot for doing this. Will do. Thank you so much. And see that. you at Roadburn. You. We're, gonna be, we're gonna be there for the four days as well. Yeah. Me too. We're gonna see the whole festival, so let's have a beer then. Well, right. cool. a coke for me. <laughs>
See you there. Well, bye bye. I don't drink beer either, so a coke <laughs> don't be fine. Right. Cool. Uh, see cool. you. Thank you. See ya. Bye.